Hello there friends and welcome for today's Warhammer Rogue Trader Guide we have all about ship combat at last. And we are of course doing it on unfair mode so that ship battles will be the hardest possible. While ship combat can be quite troublesome, if not annoying at the start, with the tips I'll provide you here, you'll definitely have a pretty easy time. So let's get started, shall we? First, and this is very important, you absolutely want to skip all ship combat on Unfair until you reach the Mandas Valencia system for the Dargonus colony, which is locked behind the main quest during Act 2. You can go there pretty fast by dealing first with Footfall at Furimbandas and then Janus at Talicos Epsilon. Dargonus is right after. Thankfully, most ship battles can be skipped just fine. You don't need to engage enemy ships even when exploring certain systems, outside of a few ones locked behind main quest, but you'll reach Dargonus way before that. And the reason is simple, once you unlock the Dargonus colony, you'll get access to very powerful projects that will make ship combat way easier. And if you're wondering about colony management and projects, I've just released a guide for that, you can check to the site here. The projects you absolutely want to rush for are rank 2 and rank 3. For the first one, just go for extasions for the nobility, because it does provide, well, a permanent passive to the main character. But anyways, for the second rank, you absolutely want shield of the emperor as fast as possible. It not only increases reputation with the imperial navy faction, which of course means better upgrades for all of your ship's gear, as the navy is the main source of ship equipment. And by default, you can only increase Imperial Navy reputation through either colony events or by defeating enemy ships, which of course requires you to first enter combat with them, thus boosting Navy rep through other means. Second, this project is so powerful that we'll provide you with another amazing benefit, the Escort Flagship. What this means is, on every single ship combat battle, You'll start battle with both your main ship and also a friendly ally ship that you can control but can deal decent enough damage and most importantly works as a distraction because better the enemies target it instead of your main ship, after all it is a game over if your main ship dies. On the other hand, even if the flagship is destroyed in battle, it doesn't matter because as soon as the next battle starts, it will be back at full health with no cost whatsoever, is extremely efficient and a complete 100% must have for hard ship combat mode. Therefore, you do not want to do any ship combat before getting at least this project on the way. Then for the third rank you want the Adeptus Arbitus project, once again for more Imperial Navy rep. This way, by combining Shield of the Emperor with this project, you'll already start with 10,000 Imperial Navy reputation for nice enough upgrade to all of your ship gear before you even get into the first ship combats, thus providing you the edge we so desperately need. Ideally, you want to start with the ship battles that are closer to the starter point of the world map, as they tend to be easier. And to get you even more ready for that, let's start with ship combat basics. The first thing to understand is that enemy ships and your own ships have initiative just like your normal party members, which means sometimes you'll be, well, kind of ambushed by enemies if they roll first on initiative and start attacking you before you can do anything. Another reason it helps to have the navy upgrades first. You can see our flagship ally already started attacking and now it's time for our turn. First, each ship sector, you have four of them, and that's the same for your ships and also enemy ships, have a different shield value. As the name itself implies, they work kinda like an energy shield. Once it's mostly depleted is when you start taking actual damage, and it's all based on the direction the enemy is attacking you from. Second, as far as ship movement, note that you cannot make sharp turns to the right or left until you move first with the ship. The game does a good job at explaining it, but to put it simply, you have to move to the area here before being allowed to make turns. And you cannot move backwards by default, you must always start by going straight ahead first. 
While you do have to fully move with your ship at the end of your turn, that is, finish your turn in one of the little green squares at the edge here, you can move, attack, move, attack and so on, right? Unlike your characters, you are not prevented from moving whenever you attack the enemies. And speaking about attacking, all of your ship weapons have different ranges. The main pro weapon essentially only hits in front of you, while the starboard is to the right and the port to the left, while dorsal has a pretty nice range all around besides the back. You can also ram at a ship so long as it's pretty close to you in a straight line, but this can also damage your own ship so it's kinda dangerous to use. Anyways, one of the most important things to know about ship combat in this game is that Torpedo weapons will be your best friend. They can do amazing damage, capable of one-shotting some enemies even on hardest mode, and of course, can deal with multiple enemies even if they are close enough. Ideally, what I found works best is that you always want to unleash your torpedoes right at the very beginning of your turn before even moving. Because the torpedoes also suffer from the same limitation as, well, any ship. They can only move to the front and can't make sharp turns so easily. If you drop them at the front, because the enemies are most likely going to try and target your ship, they will be in range for your torpedo salvo. Meanwhile, if you fully move to the end and then drop your torpedoes, chances are they won't be able to hit the enemies at all. After you unleash your torpedoes is when you start attacking the enemies, of course, which depends on the range. We can, for example, already hit this enemy here, so let's do that with our starboard weapon. And we are very close to being able to hit the other enemy on the opposite side. So let's just move a bit more and do that. As this enemy is pretty close to death, let's go for the dorsal weapon and finish it off by moving closer. And there we go. But anyways, since we have the first navy upgrades, we are decently tanky for the beginning, so let's move right here as to bait the enemies into moving closer to our torpedo salvo. Lay in the course. As two of our sectors have received damage, you might as well also use the reinforced shield abilities to recover your shield power. It does carry some penalties for the other turns, but, well, it's best to stay alive. Sadly, you'll only recover shields at the start of the next turn, which is why it helps you use them now, so let's pass. Because we changed our ship's side, the enemy first had to damage one of our sectors that were at full shield power. Now the other enemy is targeting time. our ship ally, which is great, because better it than us. Another reason it's so important to have it, it's also now attacking the enemies for a nice enough damage, and we can now dump our plasma torpedoes on this enemy here. Ideally, you always want to lead your torpedoes to the sector that has the lowest amount of health, of course, so they inflict full damage. This one here, in this example. So let's do that, and once you get your torpedoes close enough to the enemy, Select the detonation option so they explode and deal damage. Torpedoes can also self-destruct automatically after a certain amount of time has passed. But ideally, you want to target the enemy first. And there we go. Now we can move again with our ship with a few penalties because we use the restart shield ability. But it doesn't matter, there's only one enemy left and there's no way he can defeat us. Also, it's facing this direction, which means it's gonna have a hard time hitting us properly. Your Lance Sprawl weapon is probably the most damaging of all of your weapons, so you always want to use it whenever you are in range. Usually, it's gonna one-shot enemies. Or almost, in this case, because we're still at the start. But anyways, you can drop our torpedoes now, and basically just pass, because there's no way the enemies are gonna kill us. Chances are our ally ship will destroy them. There we go. A barbaric display. Once Eyes battle ends, we'll survive. get some trophies that you can sell to the navy to actually get more reputation. But you often have to convert them into cargo first, so don't forget to do that. Also, some battles will provide you with more ship gear. 
Ideally, you want to focus on torpedoes or the Prowl weapons, of course, because they are the strongest. As you defeat enemies, you also get ship experience, which means more ship abilities, so let's get into our ship progression now. Sadly, you can't really respect the ship anymore unless you're using the toy box mod, but usually you can get almost all of the abilities just fine, at least the ones you want. Speaking about ship abilities, you actually have to slot your characters in ship posts first, before you get to use them. And they all work based on a different post, for example, Torpedo Control is all about the Master Cannoneer, while Swing Run is for the Supreme Commander. Usually, you just want to slot a character that has the highest associated skill, for example, for Supreme Commander it's Persuasion, the game will always highlight the best character for that. Now, you'll always start with two ship abilities, the first is Torpedo Control, which lets you essentially give your Torpedo Salvo another turn where it can move, but you cannot use the Torpedo Salvo and then immediately cast Torpedo Control, you have to wait a turn for that. The more your torpedoes can move, the better to actually hit enemies with it, as I explained, they are extremely powerful and the best way of damaging enemy ships. Swing and Run, on the other hand, will make your ship move in a straight line first, and then make a sharp U-turn at the end of it, so you'll be facing the opposite direction. It does kinda limit your movement, however, so be careful with that, but can help when it comes to hitting more enemies with your Prowl Lance weapon as it is directly tied to the direction you're facing. Starting from the second level, however, is when you can actually select the ship abilities you want. I strongly recommend you start with Warp Wave. This will not only turn an enemy ship around, which is absolutely amazing for preventing damage, because remember, movement in ship combat battles is limited. Usually the enemies have to move in a straight line first. If you turn them around, Chances are they'll waste their turn trying to reach you and won't be able to attack you for that turn, so the ability is quite well spent. Second, if the enemy has suffered hull damage already, they'll take even more damage through this ability, so it works for both avoiding damage and dealing damage. Just note that it will not affect enemy ships larger than cruisers, which are basically the biggest ships of them all, but usually you fight a lot of the smaller ships and this will work for almost all of the battles. After that, well, I recommend you go with Reinforced Shields. With this ability you can select one of your ship's shield sectors, you have four of them as I explained before, and it will automatically increase its strength. Because this only works for a single shield sector, you kinda have to select the one that's best for your current situation, which is pretty easy and always based on what shield sector the enemies are most likely to attack. Because the enemy has to move in a straight line and then turn, Chances are he will only get to attack the left side of our ship here. So that is where I'll cast Reinforced Shield, the left port. And there we go, just as expected. I often find this a must-have when it comes to staying alive. But if you want to start with more movement and maneuverability, you can go with new heading instead. I do prefer Reinforced Shields though. For the next level and more ship abilities, once again you can pick new heading, but you also have a few other interesting choices now. Starting with Strafe, which actually lets you move to the side a bit, even at the very beginning of your movement, or Shallow Jump, another one of my favorites, because it lets you immediately move 5 cells without spending your movement. Just note that it's always in a forward direction so will depend on whatever direction you're facing at the moment. Focused efforts can also be fun, as it will reduce the cooldown of some of your ship abilities. Usually, stuff like Warp Wave and also Reinforced Shields, they all have a random cooldown of 1 to 3 turns. This will reduce the cooldown by 1 turn. Because you want to spam stuff like Warp Wave as much as possible, it can help to have this, especially if it only starts with a level 1 cooldown. I kinda prefer Shallow Jump, because, well, the more movement you can put between yourself and the enemy, the higher the chances that the enemy won't be able to target you at all. But hey, I also provided you with other options depending on what you find works best for you. Honestly, so long as you have Warp Wave at the beginning, chances are you'll be winning a lot of battles, especially with the Navy Reputation Gear boost. 
For the next level, I'd start with Strafe, but you can also go with New Heading if you prefer. And this is also a very special level because it's when we can select one of the ultimate ship abilities. They have a rather big cooldown and I think they were bugged before. <laughs> Not to ever recover, I think that's been fixed at the moment. So I kinda did my first run on Unfair without them because they would never recover <laughs> from the cooldown. Anyways, my preferred pick, the earliest, is definitely All Hands on Deck. Because if you increase the torpedoes you unleash on the enemies, and once again, torpedoes are one of the easiest ways of destroying multiple enemy ships. It even increases in duration based on the demolition ranks of your ally, and Argenta can easily have higher than 100. I really don't think there's anything better than this, at least not so early. For the next level, we are back into normal ship abilities, and well, you might as well pick one of the extra maneuverability options like Strafe or New Heading, depending on what you picked before. As far as stuff like Expeditious Reload, you can get it if you want, and it can result in more attacks per turn, it's just that this suffers from two limitations. First, you can only use it during the end phase, if you actually fired a macro cannon weapon during the acceleration phase. So it has kind of an issue. If you don't start close enough to an enemy, chances are you won't be able to use this. I'd rather stuff that works more often, so I'll be picking strafe now. We get some other new abilities at the next level. These are mostly passives, unlike the other abilities you activate per use. And my preferred pick is Silent Running, which makes it so that in most encounters, larger enemy vessels will be surprised and act later. As always, if you have the Alpha Strike, the better to destroy enemies before they can do anything. Even Steady Hand for a chance at reducing the cooldown of your ship abilities, but it's only a 20%. I'd rather something that always works. At level 6 you can select more ultimate abilities, and Pyrian Storm can be very fun for extra damage as it is warp damage, while Maximum Overdrive can provide you with a permanent boost at least until the end of battle, with higher speed and maneuverability, while Chant will keep restoring your flagship shields at the end of each turn, great for extra defenses. I'd rather more offenses so I'll be going with Empyrean Storm. You can even pick another one right now, or another normal ship ability. I'll just go for another ultimate and pick Chant. For level 7 we have another passive, and for me Silent Running 2 so that you always act first before all enemies in most encounters. And might as well grab another passive now. For me Steady Hand. While you can get more ship levels, you already have the best abilities at this point anyways. So everything else is basically an extra. And chances are, at least for Act 2 and Act 3, even Act 4, you'll kinda be stuck at this rank. What about the ship abilities I didn't pick? Well, you have Arc Augury, which you enhance the next ship shot with an extra plus 2 range. Just note that it is only for the next single weapon you use, which I find a bit disappointing, because you're often firing multiple weapons with your ship per turn. And as far as vulnerability scan, it can increase the damage one of the enemy ship sectors take, but I found it's kinda hard to highlight the ship sector you specifically want to target. But hey, you can pick it if you want. Now let's just do a quick section on how to play with your ship during combat, at least for some guidelines. You always want to start by unleashing your torpedoes, so they have an easier time hitting the enemies after they move to target and attack you on the next turn. So let's just move here. After moving, ideally you want to start attacking the enemies of course, and we can hit these enemies with two of our weapons, so let's get started doing that. Depending on the enemies you are fighting, they'll have pretty high evasion on the harder ship mode, which can be a bit annoying. Yep, we already missed our weapons, but that's what torpedoes are for, bypassing the annoying enemy high evasion rates. As we cannot attack with our plasma battery port weapon, let us use shallow jump to close in the distance, so now we can use it just fine to hit this other enemy here. And this will be the same for pretty much all of the ship's abilities that enhance your maneuverability. Use them when you need it the most to either escape from enemies or, of course, hit enemies you wouldn't otherwise. We can actually still use Strafe, so let's move right here 
Sadly, we are just one range away from targeting the other enemy. Oh well. Note that you can only use a single ship ability per post at the same time. So depending on the enemies you're fighting, if there's a very tough enemy in range, you might as well use Warp Wave on them first instead of let's say Shallow Jump to prevent them from attacking you by changing their direction. And don't forget to finish your turn with reinforced shields on whatever sector the enemies are most likely to attack you. Once the second turn begins, you'll be able to move and explode your torpedoes, and guess what, just like I said, it is exactly in range for targeting multiple enemies, so let's do that and explode both of these enemies here. Bam! And both enemies are gone just like that. Which is why I say to unleash your torpedoes as your first move, instead of at the end of your turn. And these are pretty much the basics. Also, don't forget to keep activating your focused efforts ability to reduce the cooldown of the abilities you want to spam. It's back to our turn and we pretty much didn't take any damage. Drop a torpedo once again and just start attacking the enemies and that's it. As I mentioned before, the Prowl weapon is really powerful, you can even one-shot some enemies with this, just like that. Don't forget you can keep activating focused efforts to refresh the abilities of other allies, such as Strafe in this case. And once again we have torpedoes just in range to destroy the enemy ship. And there we go, battle won. Another victory of two great now as far as other ship upgrades, well, ideally you'll always want to upgrade your ship's hull periodically as to increase the damage you can take. For the ram, it's not really necessary at all unless you really like ramming enemies, but I find that a bit dangerous. I'd rather rely on your torpedoes because they won't damage you. And as far as weapons and armor, well, like I said, just keep increasing navy reputation for the best gear. But some upgrades are better than others. Once again, you absolutely want one of the pro weapons to be a torpedo, because they're just that good. And I suggest the second pro weapon to be a lance weapon with wide firing arc, so you can have a higher chance of hitting the enemies you want, without relying on movements too much. The rest is honestly just gear that has the highest stat upgrades and so on. Lastly, what about the starter ship choice? Honestly, I just go for the Sword Class Frigate, the first option here, because it has a good enough starter loadout. But like I said, because you'll be getting a lot of navy reputation even before you do your first ship battles, the starter gear selection doesn't really matter that much, but Sword is a safe enough choice for torpedoes. It just doesn't matter that much in the long run. And well, this was it for our ship combat guide. If you found this guide useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, friends.